Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 642, Community Creatives, recorded live on August 9th, 2018. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, Dust Storm. And I am your co-host, Godzilla T. And another week of little news for Halo, but we have a couple of new things on the stream, which we'll get over to in a little bit. Kind of is the, the end of the summer lull, I think, for the most part. Not much going on uh, official news-wise, and I think the like, next biggest thing is going to be HCS London coming up here in the next month. So we're kind of high and dry for the time being, it seems. Mm hmm. But not a hot, whole lot going on. Not really. But a couple of new things on the stream tonight. We are joined by Facebook and YouTube for our live stream. So I was able to get those worked up over this past weekend to actually stream some MCC Insider uh, this past weekend. And was able to get both of those configured. So we are now getting YouTube back and additionally Facebook into the live streaming mix. So we have Halo Tutor over on Facebook right now. We also have uh, DC Rock Nation over listening on YouTube. So thank you for checking us out. Our debut podcast stream on both of those platforms. And of course, we have Mixer and Twitch up as usual. Confeld is over in Twitch. We have Misa Red and Destiny Halo over in Mixer. So thank you everyone for coming on over tonight and watching the show. Broadening our audience bit by bit. Bit by bit by bit. By tiny, tiny bit. So next is Hitbox. Uh, I haven't looked in the Hitbox yet. The next, actually, next thing I'm looking at is Twitter. Hmm. Yeah. There's a way to pull out the Periscope RTMP information from the Periscope app, but it's it's kind of janky to do it that way too. So the way Facebook is set up is you have to go and basically create a new post, so to speak, but it's a live video post, and then you start streaming to it, and then you set up all the stuff, and then you have to click go live there. So Periscope is kind of the same way where you have to start actually streaming to the service and then there's an extra step where you have to click go live. So Facebook and uh. Twitter will be similar in that regard. But I can add that RTMP stream into Nginx and we will be on five platforms. I don't think there's a Halo podcast yet that does their live stream recording on Facebook. Or Twitter. So I think we're the first there. HCS Pro Talk and that Halo show might be on Spotify, but we're broadcasting on Facebook and we're going to be broadcasting on Twitter soon. Be able to watch from many, many places. Yes. So many places. But the Spotify thing, uh, that might change possibly in the near future as well. A little oh, on that you want to hear bit. something interesting? Yes. Lex now has its own podcast. Podcast Plex? aggregator Plex. Interesting. Is it just based off of RSS fees submitted or how does it pull its podcast directory? Uh, I did some looking and like Guardian Radio is on there. Uh, podcast. Uh, Podtacular, I had to type in. I had to actually put in the RSS feed, but it did find it. Okay. But I mean, as far as, you know, br browsing, I found Guardian Radio I found, of course, Major Nelson's radio, um, but you, I didn't really dig in it into it that that much. But yeah, okay, that'll be something else to look at. Cool. So you now can get your podcasts on Plex. Very nice. We also have a little website update as well. I tweeted a picture out of this earlier, but we now have the secure green lock when you go to the website. We now have an SSL certificate because HostGator finally decided to jump on board the Let's Encrypt bandwagon and give or be part of that free SSL certificate for the web. So now you can surf our website in 
HTTPS. Yay. Yay. I think we're one of the last few Halo podcasts that actually has a website. Because <laughs> I don't think Bad Halo Show has a website. I don't think HCS Pro Talk has a website. I know Podcast Evolve has a website and Drunken Halo has a website. But I know Drunken Halo primarily uses Facebook. Podcast Evolve actually uses their website quite a bit. So they're actually... Look at that. HTTPS. I know. It's so nice. We're finally in 2018. We're not back in 2008. We just need a new theme for the website. Yeah. Now we just need to update the website. If there's any aspiring web designers out there that want to make a WordPress theme, feel free to reach out. I got a big shiny grin on the stream right now. Please. Yeah. Also on Mixer, Please. we are one fall. Fo- <laughs> yeah. Um, also on Mixer, we are one follower away from 200 followers on our Mixer channel. On Twitch, we are six followers away from 1,400, which is cool. Uh, I'm not going to go into Facebook and YouTube stats because we just started doing those. But yeah, we are uh, still slowly, slowly growing. But over time, hopefully we can get more people on board. So that's a, a quick update there. As we normally start off with, let's dive into our live streams from the past week. GT, give us a recap on Frag and Friday. Well, why don't you give us a recap for Frag and Friday? Because you showed up. I actually did show up for the for the last part of it. Not the whole part, but. Well, pretty much the first part and the last part were pretty close together. Uh, we started out the night in Castle Wars. We get, had some fun doing ground pounds and running people over. and As you do. Killing people with swords and. It really sucks that you it's a sword kill when you I know spark charge. I know. That's so frustrating. Or assassinate. It just eh. Anyway. Well, we had a lot of fun. Got our butt stomped. We stomped some butt. Played some customs. Uh, we hadn't done that in a long time. Had a lot of fun with that. Tried out some new games. We found out that my custom library is very much out of date and maps are broken, so I need to update my custom library. Yeah, I'm <laughs> thinking about just kind of <laughs> removing everything out of my library and starting over. I'm kind of thinking the same thing. There's there's a couple of like the Warzone maps and a couple of the competitive maps that I would obviously keep, but a lot of the custom game type stuff, action sacky things. Yeah. Every time there's an update to Forge, it has the potential to break. Yeah, unfortunately it does. So frustrating. I just really, 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 343, listen to me, really, really <laughs> wish that it was <laughs> at least alphabetized. Give me I a think sort they're adding option. filters. In, and yet, well, you have access to the MCC build no, now. You I'm talking in the game. In oh, sorry, Halo, Halo 5, 5, I'm thinking MCC. You have no way to start or, ser- well, you can search, but there's no way, there's no way to put them in any kind of order other than the order you favorited them in or downloaded them in or whatever, well, bookmarked them in. And in Halo Reach, those were in alphabetical order. In, yeah, you- in every other game, there they were sorted by a certain uh, way, whether it be by the base map they were built on and then alphabetically, or they were sorted alphabetically. And then now it's done by when you added it to your bookmarks. Exactly. You know, I go into maps yeah. and I go into my bookmarks and it takes 10 minutes for it shows up. Okay. Well, uh, the first map in there is Space Invaders. The next one is Nemesis. Mm-hmm. Next one after that's Yahtzee. So, huh? <laughs> and there's no way to, there is no way to sort them. And yeah, I can search them, but that also searches, uh, that also searches, uh, you know, all of them, you know, even, even ones I haven't bookmarked. So, you know, just, Three, four, three. <laughs> fix this. Fix Halo 5? Hashtag fix Halo 5. <laughs> Hashtag fix Halo 5. 
<laughs> New hashtag. You know, there's there's a lot of things that needed to be corrected in Halo 5, and I'm glad they did. Don't get me wrong. They have a really good game now. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. There's a lot of variety. But it's stupid things like that that irritate me. <laughs> you know, it just, I really don't care how you sort it. But one way to sort it is alphabetically. And then, you know, if you could sort it by the base map it was built on, then that would even be better. Let's see. How would you do? I mean, I get the yeah. game mode thing because there's really not game modes anymore because it's it's more dependent on the map than it is the game mode as to what you play. Well, another thing that would be nice, too, is if you have a map selected, whenever you go to select a selected game type, you exclude all the game types that don't work that with that map. That'd be another nice thing. Well, it, it'd be it'd be nice if the forger was able to link the game type to the map. That would be another good thing. So you select the map and it automatically loads the game type. And then if a forger makes a map that works with multiple game types, then it can filter out all the game types that won't work with the map. But I would be happy with, you know, being able to link the game type to the map. You know, if I was going to ask for anything in that arena, you know, in that area. Yep. But even just simply alphabetizing stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Just simple things. Just the simplest things. Simple things. Has anybody ever noticed that computers can't count? How do you mean? Well, think about it. Whenever you look at a list of numbers for on a computer that hasn't been programmed to count correctly, it lines up all the twos, then all the ones, all the threes. It lines the positions up so you can have a number 200 next to 200,000. Oh, yeah, because, well... It's it's not necessarily they don't know how to count. It's how you program the sorting yeah, algorithm. I know. I know. It's it's something I deal with every you know, every time I have to deal with my inventory at work, like a day <laughs> like today, which I, I oh. physically touched every air filter, oil filter, and fuel filter in the building. And if anybody's ever been in a parts store, you know that's a lot of damn filters. I haven't been in one, but I can assume that's a lot of filters. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. Anyway, but you know, just dealing with the stupid computer and the fact that it can't count. <laughs> how hard is it to make it count? Probably dealing with some legacy stuff there, too. Well, see, the sad thing is, is it was updated. Don't get me wrong. it's It's been a while since the actual operating program has been updated but it was updated in we was it 2005 we got a whole new interface why could they teach the thing how to count <laughs> enough of that rant but <laughs> yes 343 I- please make halo 5 custom games sortable or at least put them in alphabetical order some kind of reasonable human way to figure out where things are without digging through 10 pages of custom maps and modes. Yeah, that's the only real thing I've got with playing customs is the fact that you just, it's hard to find the game you want, and then it's even harder to find the freaking game type to go with it. Very true. I mean, luckily, a lot of forgers are smart, and they use the same screenshot for the game type and the map so that helps helps but it doesn't always happen even for some of the popular ones all right uh i know we kind of took a tangent on the whole fragment friday thing (laughs) we had a lot of fun yeah and i showed up for once yay and my customs suck although the last one that we did we did tower of power and it did work it did work (laughs) So that Good. was the only one that that was left that worked. Uh, it they need to make it to where turrets 
cannot be taken off the stand though because that still is a pain well couldn't you just what would happen if he like just fused or phased a uh, warthog in there because you can't break off a warthog turret you're right and it works just like the regular turrets as far as cooldown time and fire rate the only thing is you'd have the the hog sticking through the bottom of the the walkway there, and that might actually interfere with some of the gameplay. Yeah, I guess so it that, could. That, that spot gets a lot of action. But it's, it's not a bad idea to, to try it, at least. It'd be nice if there was a way to, to get the Warthog turret without actually getting the Warthog with it. If there's some weird quirky forge way to do it. Yeah, I don't think there is, but I can't say that I've seen people do that. <laughs> He's just saying, no, must take turrets off always. <laughs> no. Don't do that. It would be interesting to see what the if if there's a way to turn the I guess respawn timer down to where it's it comes back up like instantaneously. Like if someone rips off the turret and then drops it, so that might be something to look into. Could be, um, but the the one thing you have to be careful with that is that they don't rip off like four turrets and then stand up there with, with you know four or five turrets. Well, it would be where if like the turret, I don't know how it would be with like, the other vehicles, but the vehicles don't respawn unless the other vehicle that it's referenced on isn't interacted with for, I guess, like 30 seconds or something. And then it either despawns or would spawn back. So some kind of. No, I mean, like if that. somebody. Yeah, I, yeah, I, don't know. I mean, it, it depends on, I guess, what the logic is, is would it spawn another turret, even if one of the ones that was pre previously ripped off is still out in the field. That's well, it'd be question. nice if, well, what you could do is if you rip the turret off, you only get like one shot. Yeah, that's good. That, that's that, good that would keep people from uh, ripping turrets off. That's a very good point. But I don't think you can adjust that setting in on turrets. I know you can, you can adjust the amount of ammo in weapons in the, in the game type, but I don't think you can do that for Individual ones like, you know, individual ones or individual things like turrets. Yeah, it'd be worth checking out. I, I think you're right, though. I'm not sure what, what, how that happens. Quick sc- shout out to Skyrim Halo over on YouTube. Thanks for dropping in the chat. Hey, Skyrim. And he's over on Facebook as well. Is he on all the places? Oh, he's on Twitch. You on Mixer? Hey, he's on, he's everywhere. <laughs> all right. <laughs> He's everywhere. Oh, and Confal's on Twitch and Mixer too. Very nice. Okay, so that was our customs night. I didn't see a tweet out about the next rotational playlist for this week. Did you? Do you know what's out there for this weekend? Uh, no. But I, since I uh, have Halo Five up and running, I will take a look. Okay. Uh, Covenant Slayer and Castle Wars are the two uh, rotationals. So Covenant, Covenant Slayers is the new one. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't get to play any Castle Wars last week, so I got to get myself some Castle Wars action. Um, unfortunately, tonight they need as many insiders as possible to play tonight and the rest of the weekend. So I will probably be going over there um, after we're done with the podcast. But as far as the rotational playlists, Covenant Slayer, I've played a couple of times in the past. Uh, it's not one I usually jump on, though. Yeah, I, I've I do have the Insider downloaded, and I've I played for a little while. But the two choices they had when I went to play was Halo Two, Two V Two, or Halo Three, Team Slayer. I ain't good enough for Halo Two, Two V Two, and I can't <laughs> stand Halo Three, so. I didn't play for very long. (laughs) So they have been changing playlists frequently, sometimes on a daily basis. It's definitely worth checking out if you have the time. And for this weekend, they're pretty much doing an all hands for uh, today, Saturday and Sunday for, I think it's 11 to two Pacific and then six to nine Pacific, which translates to, two to five Eastern 
and nine to midnight Eastern. And there's some things they're trying to get a, a hold on as far as <clears throat> match, matching up. I'm, I'm wondering if they're kind of restricting the regional search for some of the stuff. And they're asking people to report using the report a problem feature on the insider, um, the Xbox Insider Hub app. So I, I think they're really trying to stress test it. I mean, this weekend, um, I might, you know, I might be able to get on and play some Saturday night because uh, I have to work tomorrow, so I won't be staying up real late tonight. But uh, Saturday night. Uh, I'll probably get on and play for a little while and try to do my part to help out. The more they get, the better. And the funny thing, well, not funny thing, the nice thing is if you play during one of the play sessions and you actually stay through and play most of your matches without quitting out, you will get access to a special nameplate that you will have in the final build that gets released to MCC when it comes out. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we will uh, provide a link to those that are on the live streams now. For those that are listening via download, I may have this out by Sunday, but I am not sure. I think for the most part, for those that are in, in the Insider, they've probably already heard. But for those who haven't, please check out the uh, Halo Waypoint forums and make sure you are uh, reporting all the stuff that you see problems with during your time in the game. To be either whether you're going through the campaign stuff, multiplayer, trying out Forge Theater, or any of the new settings that they've added into the game, report anything and everything that you see as a problem. They want to know and they want to squash as many bugs as possible. Yes, let's help them get this, get it fixed. Hashtag fixing MCC. So, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Mixer all have the link. So check it out if you are part of the Insider Program. And if you're not part of the Insider Program, you have until this Monday. Was it this Monday or was it today? Uh, I should have looked this up beforehand. There's a a deadline for when you can actually register for the Insider. And I think it was very, very soon. Someone can look that up for me. I'm trying to find it. But anyways, there is a deadline to be part of the Insider. That may have already passed. But if it hasn't, then you need to hop on it ASAP. This is your last chance to get into the Insider program. And I don't think they're taking any more people afterwards as well when the Insider program changes over to be kind of the test bed area. I don't think it's... I don't think they're taking more people after that. No, it's probably depends on how active it is. Sure. You know, if it's not if they're not getting populated, it may, um, it may, uh, open up again, but get in now. I would get in now while you still have the time. If you have any interest whatsoever in helping out, then now is the time to do it. No need to wait any longer. The more active you are in it, probably the more, well, the higher probability you may be able to test. The next Halo game? Maybe. Uh, it's a possibility. I would not be surprised if they start uh because they they have stated that they're gonna flight Halo Infinite. And it would not be surprising if they pull from that MCC flight program. The people that were active in it and were giving them good feedback without being abusive. Um so I think that that's would be a very a good place for them tell. to look. Yep. I think that's a very strong tell. If you are part of the MCC and you are giving good feedback and actively playing in it, they're looking at that kind of stuff. So definitely try to do that. Uh, also, I found the uh, cutoff. You have until Monday, April, August 13th at noon Pacific time to register for part of the MC- MCC Insider Program. That is the cutoff point. So by the time you're listening to this podcast, it's too late. Yep. Well, if I get this podcast out soon enough, you might still have a chance. <laughs> Depending Maybe. on when you're listening to this. If it's afternoon Pacific time on Monday, August 13th, your host. Yep. 
head on over to aka.ms slash MCC sign up to register to be part of the MCC Insider program. Clock is ticking. Do not wait any longer. Uh, since we diverged more again, <laughs> a couple other stream stuff. I did not stream achievements on Sunday because work has had me just to the wall on getting stuff done for the fiscal year with contracts and acquisitions. And it's been just mentally work has been exhausting. making work a lot more so than normal and not normal work that I typically work on either. <laughs> so I did not stream on Sunday, although I did stream with the wife on Tuesday. We were able to get through assault on the control room. So we are officially Woo-hoo! halfway through the first Halo game. And it took us almost two hours to get through it. But that's the longest mission of the game. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Longest mission of the game. So we are done with that one. We are moving along. For a couple of upcoming surprises, which I won't say because she's sitting over on the couch. But yeah, it's going to be hopefully a lot smoother sailing from here. Uh, the only other mission I could think might be a snag really is the Maw, probably. There's there probably going to be a couple of, of points on there that might confuse her. So that, that might be where I have to step in a couple of times. But other than that, she's making some good progress. Haven't really decided yet on uh, how many more we're going to do before she starts going and teaching again. I think the idea is to try to get the game done before she's really back involved with it. So we might have a couple of extra streams. She wants to get it done before she really starts getting back into the heavy school teacher life again. Uh, We will plan on doing it again on Tuesday. We might have a couple of extra streams sprinkled in there as we try to get the game done. And this weekend, I don't think I'll be doing another achievement stream because of the MCC and Flighter test. So the week after is when I'll jump back into doing more achievements uh, for Halo. So that's our, our stream recap for the week. I actually... Take that back. I did stream the MCC Insider build, I guess, on Saturday, and that's when I got the YouTube and Facebook stuff configured. So I did stream that with uh, Misa Red and uh, I forget who else it was. Stream on Misa, who it was. And it was during DJ Saturday Night uh, Mix stream. He does a he does his own mixes on Saturday night on his mixer channel. So we were playing while he was mixing. Yeah. All right, stumbling on over into the news, we have pretty much nothing. We got a new trailer for Halo Fireteam Raven. With Jeff, Jeff Spicer, Spicer in it. it. Mm hmm. Because <laughs> he's the Halo announcer guy. Oh. He is. I, I guess it's technically a commercial. It is but. a commercial. And I actually saw it on TV. They do cut it a little different on TV. They don't have the little in part with Jeff Steitzer, but it, it was, yeah, I was depressed. I'm like, oh, man, you jerks. That's anyway, the best part. Well, the one I saw was cut down to be, I think, a 15 second commercial. Oh, OK. Because half ad 15 or a 30 second commercial. It was shorter than the one that they posted up on YouTube. OK, got it. But you still get the same point. But it's nice to see Halo on TV again. Well, yes. Halo commercials on TV. Too yeah. bad it's not for the next game. <laughs> uh, and Kregosaur Craig- was the other person on Saturday. So thank you, Misa, for that. The funny thing with the commercial is it says it's only at Dave and Buster's. Even though we've seen social media posts from people in Australia that have it. So clearly, it's not only at Dave and Buster's <laughs> anymore. Well, it, it's only at Dave and Buster's in the United States. Okay, that makes which sense. Is, yeah, which is where the marketing is being focused, or that commercial is being focused. That that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm sure the commercial in Australia says something different. <laughs> Do we have any followers from Australia? Can you write into us and say if? where they might know where the Halo Fireteam Raven is. 
down there. And if you're I seeing commercials was... on television about it. Yes, please let us know. I did actually play on Sunday. We had our local 405th unit actually have a little place, not play session, but kind of get together at our Dave and Buster's locally. So I was able to play a little bit of it. I wasn't able to play all the way through from start to finish. Ran out of money or too many people? Uh, too many people uh, going through and, and wanting to play. And uh, we actually had to come back home and entertain people that were coming over. So we got some food while we were there. We kind of um, sat with the four or fifth folks for a little bit. And then while they were getting suited up, they actually got into suits and played. I went to I went with my wife and we played maybe for about 20 minutes or so. And that was enough to get through, I guess, the last two missions and just the beginning part of the first one. So at some point, I I would like to do a podcast on it when both of us have had the opportunity to actually play through the whole thing. Yeah, I, I can't tell you when the next time I'm going to go to Dave and Buster's is. <laughs> I know. I need to see if I can get my buddies together and we all go out there and maybe I'll even bring a camera. Yeah, live stream it. Well, I don't know that I'll be live streaming it, but I will record it and it may show up on the YouTube channel somewhere. Yeah, there you go. I have to see if I can get I'm I'm guessing there's probably gonna be time in Seattle to go to Dave and Buster's. Wouldn't be surprised if we tried to get I guess there's a I'm guessing there's a Dave and Buster's in Seattle somewhere. But trying to get the group to, a group together and go. And if I take my GoPro, I'm hoping the wide angle view on the GoPro is enough to get all four screens so I can just kind of stick it in the middle and then just record. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I take a look at, I mean, I've got a wide angle for my camcorder as well. I, I just don't know if you can get all four screens in there being that close to it. And uh, thanks for the bits, Confal, over on Twitch. Appreciate it. Bits, bits, more bits. Bits, bits, and more bits. All the tiny bits. I am curious to see what the um, other differences are. There's already some major differences I've noticed between Fireteam Raven and Halo CE. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they say it's not everything in it? It's not canon? It's not complete canon, I don't believe. But it does follow some of the events from uh, the book, The Flood. Yes. So it follows an ODS team that was under Major Silva, which he is a character in The Flood. And it does depict some of the stuff that was talked about in The Flood. But there are there is also a lot of stuff that has not been prepared portrayed in any of the official canon. So, you know, what you see in it, if you're a real canon nut, just take it with a grain of salt. It's a video game. It's It was designed to try to appeal to the masses. So it's probably not going to be completely accurate. Like, you know, the fact that you have to reload a plasma pistol. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't call it reloading i call it i call it cooldown but the my button mind. says reload I it know. doesn't say cooldown. i know <laughs> <laughs> but still it's like okay how much slack do you give it because this is an arcade game and you want that those controls to be as simple as possible yeah and you have a rocket launcher that has unlimited ammo yeah that's true just bang 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 <laughs> Like, can I have that rocket launcher, please? Can I, can I <laughs> have a red card for that rocket launcher? Please? Right, right. <laughs> uh, good stuff. So check out your da- local Dave and Busters if you haven't already. There is Fireteam Raven now out everywhere in the United States for Dave and Busters. We'll be coming to other regions in the not too distant future. We've obviously heard that it's already in Australia. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in Canada already, I think we actually heard there's a couple of Canadian instances of Fireteam Raven out there. I wouldn't be surprised if London and Western Europe is next. 
on the list probably before the end of the year. So just keep your eyes out and you'll probably have something in your neck of the woods pretty soon. The first edition of the uh, Spotlight article series has been published. It was published yesterday. And this is the segment where Grim was talking about last week that they're separating it out from the Halo community update. So we have all of our uh, Halo spotlights and Halo hotshots in this community thread. You can officially submit it by tagging your stuff on social media with the hashtag Halo Spotlight. And you can still use uh, Halo hotshots for screenshots, but Halo Spotlight is the one they're going to be looking for going forward. Still get your 343 Fire Unicorn Assault Rifle skin if you uh, still need that. But if you have any kind of artwork, videos, montages, screenshots, drawings, any of that kind of stuff, then just throw on the tag Halo Spotlight to have a chance to be featured on the uh, new Spotlight series that they have going on. Quite a few art pieces. I I don't know if this is just me finally acknowledging that there's a lot more art out there or if it's just being generated because of the Halo Infinite hype or it's just maybe more aware. But it seems like there's a lot more Halo artwork being produced more recently than there was, say, six months or a year ago. Does it seem that way to you? Ooh, probably. Um, it seems like I've been seeing it circulate a lot more. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just finally getting out amongst the the masses a lot a lot more. So, just something I I noticed. There's quite a few good pieces. I think my favorite artist piece that's in here is the um, was it the um, Isabel and Douglas? Yeah, that's a good I one. Think, I I really like that one. Another cool one which I hadn't seen before is. It's not cross stitching, but it's the stitching in the fabric of Master Chief and Locke. Yeah. And the Isabel and Douglas one is really, really close to the Halo Enthusiast drawing with the like the original Master Chief drawing. That one is really well done. That's all pencil work. My favorite of all time is 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 got to be the plasma grenade plasma grenade cupcakes. Plasma cupcakes. I'm trying to remember those. I oh, know. it's I, about three years old, three, four years old, something like that. I know, I while. know, but I need to find those. Oh, jeez. I remember, I remember seeing them, but I don't know why I can't remember them. I feel ashamed. You're a bad Halo fan. And I don't think, yeah, Google Images is failing me too. Dang. But, All right, I'm yeah. retiring. I'm done. <laughs> This is the last podcast. Dust is retiring. Uh, (laughs) Nah, it takes a lot more to get rid of me than that. No, yeah, I couldn't even tell you how many things I've forgotten about. Things I've seen that were related to Halo between, you know, art, music, you know, uh, cartoons, you, you name it. Machinima. There's just so much out there. You can't. The, I. I don't think there's anybody that can remember it all, except Grim. He's probably the only one. <laughs> well, he's got the Halo Bible. He can cheat. Yeah, but how much of the Halo Bible is community creations? Uh, I'll bet you they do have a a a community creation Bible for reference, at least. Don't get me wrong. Grim remembers a lot, but it is also his job. I'm going to ask Grim about that because now I'm curious if there's like a massive community collection of stuff that they have. I know HBO was back in the Halo 1 and Halo 2 days, the place where you could find a lot of that archived community post because that was, I mean, Louis Wu or Claude Herrera by his uh, real name is he kind of fostered a lot of communities and Pod Tackler included back in the day and that was like the place other than if if you got onto HBO that was pretty good for being community driven content and uh, granted a lot of stuff got posted there but it was kind of that gateway into Bungie.net getting stuff posted on there as well 
So they have a lot of older stuff uh, shared up there. A lot of these days, it's on Reddit, but there's so many posts on Reddit now. It's it's hard to it's hard to browse through. Yeah, I guess you could go through the most liked threads, and you'll probably get a good sense of stuff that was community created. But there's still some stuff that doesn't do well there, but might do well on YouTube or might do well on Facebook or Twitter. So it's it's a hodgepodge of stuff. Just keep your eye out for it whenever you see it. And to sh- shamefully plug the Halo Hub here, and that was one of the things that Haas was trying to do with the Halo Hub was to have a place where you could have a, a central sharing point for a lot of community created content. And we don't get a, a lot of the Yes, kind of smaller but still significant things posted there either. So, no matter where you're looking, you're not going to get everything. Yeah, it would be a real scavenger hunt to find it all. Yeah, it really would. Well, look who we have over on Facebook Cryptoflix. I think it's Cryptoflix. Uh, Pada, is that, was that your gamertag, Cryptoflix? I think it is. Uh, he was one of the guys that ran pod tv in between the transition from fumo to myself mm. doing the the pod tv stuff so we we have some legacy we yeah we have some legacy podtacular staff in the on the facebook site tonight so i think facebook was a good idea yeah <laughs> not bad yep cryptoflix i did remember that right Man, it's been a while since we've talked. Wow. So yeah, we are we are among greatness right now over on Facebook. But thanks for dropping by the stream. We are not worthy. We are not worthy. <laughs> now it's great to have you back on over. Thanks for watching the stream. I had several ideas for Pod TV back in 2009, 2010 that just did not take off. Yeah. Now that there was kind of a s- there was kind of a sweet spot in there for Halo content, and if you missed it, you missed it. It's all good. We're still here. We're still trying to truck along and put our two cents out there amongst the, the noise or amongst the slush. Doing what we can to foster a positive community. Yes, definitely. So we went through the art stuff. There's some videos that were released. Uh, I've been seeing more of uh, this. The first one that's up here from Row Note Gaming. I've been seeing more and more of his videos pop up lately. Yeah, I think I'm guessing he's kind of. I don't think he's new to YouTube, but I think his uh, new not popularity. Uh, I guess just kind of being more prevalent as of late. So being relevant is not the right term, but like probably. Like he probably did Halo videos before, but now is he's just finally kind of got over that initial hump of getting a following and having people share his content. And so uh, he has a little bit of history on the Brutes and their role within the Covenant. I haven't watched it yet, but there's been a lot of videos lately on backstories and lore. I know Hidden Experience been going through a lot of it. The next one on there is the only assassin that Assassination Attempt on the Arbiter, which I'm currently reading through because I'm reading the Kill of Five trilogy. Uh, we have a couple of other montages. There's an Ogre 2 Halo 1 montage. There's an MCC Community montage. There's a... I thought the... There's a Spartan Fest MX. I guess that, that was down in Mexico. There's a video vlog on that one. Uh, there's a trick jump from a Pelican to a Pelican on Halo Reach that I wasn't even aware of. Uh, so those are the different videos up there. And then on the bottom, we have the Halo Hot Shots. So all the screenshots. And we got some pretty notable names up there once again. We've got Harispis. We've got Drax over from uh, Ready Up Live or now Ready Up. And a couple other good ones up there as well. Nice selection this week. Really good selection. And I'm happy that they broke it off into its own article because... There was enough content in there that dwarfed some of the rest of the community update stuff. So it's a, I think it was a right move to have 
all the community creations featured in its own article and to have all the community update stuff in its own thing. So good job. Two thumbs up. Yeah, definitely. At least from us. This weekend, there is the Microsoft Store Halo 5 Guardians 2v2 happening at your local Microsoft Store, wherever you are. That's going to be taking place on Sunday, August 12th. The next one after that is going to be September 9th. There is going to be a 4v4, which is the week right after PAX. Following that is going to be HCS London, which is September 14th through the 16th. The first ever Halo Open tournament, not in North America. There will be teams flying in from North America, Australia, and New Zealand, and Mexico. You can go and purchase your tickets over at Halo.gg. And that will preclude the uh, finals coming up in November at DreamHack Atlanta. That is all the news. <laughs> Nothing else from the community that at least that I was able to pull, unless you have anything, GT, that you're aware of. No, I don't have anything. Okay. Very nice, then. Uh, I have been trying to get the guys from Forge Hub and Battle Pro on to talk about the Halo Evolved tournament that they're running, but because of how busy work has been and I'm have, having to work um, extra hours, I have not been able to actually follow up with them to get them on the show. So... I'm hoping before I go to Seattle for PAX that I will get them on the show. It's just a matter of how much more extra work I'm having to get done. I'm hoping it won't take much longer, but with my workload, it's hard to say whether or not we can coordinate guests on before before that time. So we're going to try, but unfortunately, no guarantees just in this kind of short period of my work. We had to postpone the podcast this week because I had to actually work a few extra hours last night. So we're actually doing this right before Friday, Friday, which we're already 45 minutes into technically. So I'm going to wrap this up so we can get on to that. But a quick update from our Spartan company, our commendations. Uh, we were pretty close last week on getting one of them completed and we didn't quite make it. We're eight away. Ooh, eight. Just eight. I thought we would make it, but we were so close. We just didn't quite make it. And it is hijacking and skyjacking. We have eight more. Only eight. Mm, we may have to work on that tonight. <laughs> just so we can finish that up. There you go. So eight. You only need we only need eight more hijacks or skyjacks to complete that kill mastery. Uh, or that kill commendation. Uh, and that will complete that one out. And then the next one that's right behind that is getting a um, perfect kill with a weapon. We are still quite a bit of ways on that one. It's roughly uh, 1,500 to go on that one. And the lowest one is still uh, shoulder bash kills with a long way to go. And uh, killing Marines is still ticking this way up and we're over 2000 now on this level. So you guys are cranking out some of those Marine kills pretty, pretty nicely. I'm guessing Confal is still on his, uh, Marine focus on Warzone, which is nice. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of luck killing Marines last Friday. <laughs> it's all good. Especially uh, with Castle unfortunately, Wars. I'd, I'd go to, I'd go kill, uh, Go to kill Marines, and uh, there'd be more than just Marines in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, Isaac Love, thank you for following us over on Mixer. DJ is not usually on this podcast, <laughs> so uh, he might find a guest spot during one of the podcasts I do in Seattle, but... I think that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. There's no other Halo news for us to talk about. No other community news. Hopefully we'll have some more community stuff to cover in next week. And I'm assuming we probably won't get more big Halo news until either PAX or if for some reason in the next couple of weeks the MCC Insider build gets published to the actual build of the game, then there might be some Halo news to talk about there. So that will wrap it up for us tonight. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media websites. We are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Mixer, Twitch, Instagram. 
Uh, we have our Spartan Company and our Xbox Club. You can just search for Podtacular wherever and you will find us. You can also check out our Discord server, podtacular.com slash Discord. And also check out the Halo Hub, thehalohub.com, where you can find uh, community content shared by the community. And hopefully it's a place where you can uh, find content that you would be interested in. Or if you have some content of your own, you are more than happy to share it over there as well. Also, make sure you check out our podcasting network. We're part of a network of gaming-specific shows, including Cryptcast, which is a TF2 podcast, Guardian Radio, which is a Destiny podcast, Podcast 76, which is an Overwatch podcast, Learning Cliff, which I don't think they're doing anymore. It wasn't even on podcast. Uh, Work in Progress and How to Murder Time. You can find about find out more about all those podcasts over at t h e p o d k a s t dot com. On behalf of GT and myself, thank you everyone for watching the stream. Thank you for our new viewers over on YouTube and Facebook. We will be looking forward to seeing you again next week. But until then. Keep on fragging them trucks. Mm-hmm.